The email task section of the photo booth operator is one of the most important sections in the entire system. This is the area where you're able to set up automated email tasks that apply to various aspects of the photo booth operator system. When you first click on to view email task, it'll show whatever tasks you currently have set. None are currently set, so we're going to go ahead and create one from scratch. We click the add new button. The add new email task comes up. What you need to do first is give it a name. So this is going to be a two-week week DVD reminder. You can boot a description if you'd like. Now we get into the nuts and bolts, and this is where it's extremely important. You can choose to execute a task either in the past or the future, and if you do so, to the right here, you have the ability to indicate what time frame, or you can select from a drop-down of different specific activities. For example, when an event is added, when it is edited, when intended is added, when it is updated, etc., etc. If you select, for example, when an event is added, you lose the ability to indicate a time frame, since this will occur every single time that an event is added. When you've decided what you want your task to be, then you need to decide who it is going to be sent to. And some drop-downs are limited to who you can send it to. So, for example, when the event is added, we have selected, and you'll see that you have uh, options of who you would like to send the contact to. The event host, the attendant, the user, or the venue. Now, let's choose another one. For example, when a user is added, and you'll see that the photo booth operator only allows us to send a contact to the user. When we're adding a user, you're not going to be sending an email to a venue. It just doesn't apply. It doesn't make any sense. We're going to create a email reminder here that is one for a follow-up sales opportunity. So we're going to do this in the future. And we're going to schedule this task for seven days. And then we have to decide either before or after the event ends. And in our case, it's going to be after the event ends. Then we get to choose what conditions this email task is sent under. First, we have to determine if the trigger is live and active. Anything that is not active will not be sent. So, for instance, you may have some limited time contacts, or you may have something that is very specific that you want to turn on and off. So, if it is not live and active, it will not be sent. You can decide if you'd like to send only if there is an outstanding balance. So, for example, a lot of people will have it automatically set to send a reminder two weeks before an event that the remaining balance is due. However, if you toggle this as only send if there is an outstanding balance, then that email will not be sent to someone who has an outstanding balance. Obviously, if someone has paid in full in advance, you don't want to send them an email two weeks out saying, please send me the remaining balance of zero dollars. It doesn't look professional, so you have the opportunity to set that. You can send to only specific types of events. Different companies have different rules and guidelines dependent upon what the event type is. And this is your opportunity to set that. You can also limit the trigger only if a contract has not been received, artwork has not been received, or a follow-up has not been sent. So, again, what many people will do is they'll set up a email task, a three weeks, four weeks, uh, six months, whatever it is, before an event to send out an email if they have not received a contract back yet. So, contract not received would be the condition that you can trigger. Then, we have the ability to really drill down, and this is where the photo booth operator shows incredible power. You're able to put a couple of conditions on your trigger. So, it's going to say your condition is is either did order or did not order. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to send out an email seven days after an event to anyone that did not order a DVD reminding them that it is available for purchase and to contact us. So we're going to say that they did not order and then you can either say they did not order a specific package or 
they did not order an extra. In our case, it's going to be an extra DVD. If you look real close here, you'll see that we actually offer two different types of DVD. So we're going to do this. We're going to say, okay, we're going to only send this email if they did not order a DVD. However, if they ordered a deluxe DVD, it, they're still going to be sent that email because they didn't order a DVD. So we need to add a condition, and we can have up to two. And we first need to determine whether it's an and or an or, and there's a very, very, very important distinction between these two. If we were to say they did not order a DVD or they didn't order the deluxe DVD, then it wouldn't be sent out if they had ordered one but not the other one. But because it's an or, then either condition is going to be met. It sounds confusing, but the best way to think about it is is that or should be utilized on different extras, different packages. If you have things similar, such as the two DVDs, you need an and. Because basically what we're going to say now is and the customer did not order the deluxe DVD. So if they did not order a DVD and they did not order a deluxe DVD, then they'll be noticed, they'll be sent this email reminding them that a DVD is available. Again, because they are similar, it's best to use the and. If they're different, you probably want to use the or, but you can also use the and. Also of extremely important note, the photo booth operator is intelligent insofar that if this individual ordered a package that contained the DVD as one of its extras, you don't need to put that package in here. Just go ahead and put the DVD. It'll search through packages that contain extras. Then we need to give a subject for our email. And you'll see that there's this little pin. I'm putting your mouse over it shows that we actually do have some shortcuts available. So we're going to personalize this with the host's first name and last name. Um, special offer from and then our company name. You can put on any signature that you'd like. Then you select the email template that you would like to see it's sent. So we have one that's called No DVD that we've previously created. We can set the background color if we'd like, we can attach a form if we'd like, and we can attach files if we'd like. There's no need to do any of that. So we're going to go ahead and set this email task. Now remember, this is an email task. We're going to call it Two Week DVD Reminder. It is going to be sent in the future, seven days after the event ends. It triggers live and active. And we're going to send it only to events where they did not order a DVD and they did not order our deluxe DVD. So they've ordered no DVD at all. We have a subject line that has their first name, last name, and it says special offer from our company name. And we're going to use the no DVD email template. So let's go ahead and set this task. With Operator returns us to a list of email tasks. Shows now that we have our two week DVD reminder. It's condition is that it takes place seven day after an event ends and it sends out the no DVD email it is active we can go ahead and edit this at any time or we can delete it there's no harm in deleting email tasks if it is deleted then it will not be triggered so if you were to delete this email task today and tomorrow you had an event end seven days prior with no DVDs they would not be notified once it's deleted it's gone for good. All the previous contact still remains, but no future contact will be done. You can also accomplish the same goal by making it inactive, in which case then you can make it active later on should you decide to bring it back.